What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This video has been requested multiple times the past couple of months in my comment section and I don't think I've ever done this video before and that is my top 10 most anticipated movies for this coming year of 2024. Now this was extremely difficult because looking at the release schedule and all the movies that are upcoming for the next year there was a lot of great options. This is pretty much the year of the sequel. There's a lot of sequels coming out, probably a few prequels. So this was extremely hard and difficult, but I did manage to whittle the list down to only 10. Now I do have to say before I get started with any personal top 10 list that I do, this is my personal top 10 list. It's not yours. We're going to have differences and that is okay. That is fine. So if you have your own top 10 list of movies that you are anticipating, feel free to comment down below and let me know. Maybe I missed one and I'll put it on my list. It's not going to be a top 10. It'll then be a top 15. So let's jump right on in and start off with number 10. And I chose the brand new horror film, Abigail. Now, some of you out there may not have heard about this movie yet, but I just saw the trailer for this film. I've only seen it one time, but to see the trailer one time and it grabs my attention enough to be in my top 10 list, that is pretty good. And I think the reason why I chose it for my top 10 is because I'm just really curious about this movie. It's a different idea. It's not a sequel. It's not a prequel. This is directed by Radio Silence. They gave us Ready or Not, Scream 5, and Scream 6, and Scream 6, sorry. It's also starring Melissa Barrera. Now, as I said, this is a horror film, and I don't want to spoil everything for you entirely, but the basic plot of the movie is you have this young girl. I think she's about 12 years old. She's a dancer. You can tell she's coming from a very wealthy and privileged environment and she gets kidnapped by this group of criminals, which Melissa Barrera is a part of. But what they do not know is that this little girl is a vampire. Sold. You sold me on this. We need more great vampire movies anytime. I'm just a vampire fan in general. So anytime we can get a vampire film, I'm all for it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Radio Silence has done with this concept, this idea, with the entire film. So Abigail is coming in at number 10 on my list. All right, let's move on to number nine. My list is right next to me. That's why I'm looking over. If I do this, I'm looking over at my list. So number nine, surprisingly enough, is Furiosa. And the reason why I'm saying surprisingly enough is because I haven't seen any of the prior Mad Max films. So why is Furiosa on my top 10 list? Because of the trailer. I've now seen the trailer for this movie twice. And let me tell you something, whoever cut this trailer together really earned their paycheck because this trailer is awesome. It is absolutely incredible. The sound, the cinematography for the movie looks incredible. You have Anya Taylor-Joy as Furiosa. You have Chris Hemsworth in there as well. It just looks absolutely incredible and amazing. So this is perfect timing for me because I've never seen any of the previous films. I can just binge them all in preparation for Furiosa. But watching that trailer... And seeing it in Dolby on the biggest screen possible just really puts you in the mood to see the movie. And after seeing that trailer, it's one of those trailers where you say, I have to go to the theater to see this film. Like, don't wait for streaming. You have to see it in the movie theater. And those are the trailers that I absolutely love. So that's why Furiosa landed in my top 10 list. All right, number eight. Number eight, we are switching gears a little bit, and I put The Fall Guy. The Fall Guy is starring Ryan Gosling and also Emily Blunt. This is a rom-com. It's kind of an action rom-com because the plot line of this movie, you have Ryan Gosling plays a stuntman, and he's working on a movie directed by Emily Blunt. And these two characters 
have a past history. I guess they had a relationship of some kind. They broke up or one of them ghosted the other one and now they're working together. So it's kind of like a tense environment. And the conflict that happens in the movie is I believe the leading man, the leading actor in the movie disappears or he gets kidnapped or something and they have to find him. And for some reason, Ryan Gosling is the stuntman has to find him. I don't know. I'm not really clear on that. But it looks like a great, fun action rom-com. And I'm mainly excited for this movie because of Ryan Gosling. He really proved his comedic ability in Barbie. He was my favorite part of the film. Now, <laughs> I know it's weird for you guys to hear me say this over and over again because you know the video I made and my feelings about Barbie and everything like that. But for some reason, when I went to the theater and I saw Barbie for the only time at the theater, I didn't see Ryan Gosling and the brilliancy of his comedic timing. But when I rewatched the movie, I couldn't even believe it. I feel like Ryan Gosling opened the door to comedies for his career. I mean, I know he's done a couple in the past, but I feel like now when people want a comedic leading man, they'll go to Ryan Gosling more often because he's just so incredible and he just got an Oscar nomination. He's doing fantastic. I think this is the height of his career right now. And I'm just really looking forward to seeing that movie, The Fall Guy mainly because of Ryan Gosling. He is the selling point for me. So I'm really looking forward to seeing The Fall Guy. Plus it's coming out at a great time of the year. It's going to open up the summer box office because it's releasing the first weekend of May. So I'm going to have to wait a little bit, but Ryan Gosling is worth the wait. All right. Now that I've gushed about Ryan Gosling, is he one of my new men? I don't know. Maybe. All right. Let's move on to spot number seven. Spot number seven, I put A Quiet Place Day One. I have no idea what this movie is about, except for the fact that obviously this is a prequel. We are going back to day one of when everything just went to hell. And it's starring Lupita Nyong'o. That's it. That's all, that's all I need to know. You sold me with Lupita. I mean, she is so talented and so amazing and incredible. Is John Krasinski coming back to direct this? I should have looked that up. But you know what? Regardless, you're regardless, whatever. The, these films are amazing. I mean, A Quiet Place was fantastic. And then when they did A Quiet Place Part 2, I know everyone was really questioning that movie. Is it going to live up to the original? And I thought it did. Even some people out there thought it was better than the first movie. It's just, these movies are just so, so gosh darn good. So I'm hoping, cross fingers, that A Quiet Place Day One will live up to the two prior films. I think they will. They've been working on this movie for a while now. And I just, I have high hopes. I have high hopes. And these movies are so awesome to see in the theater. A Quiet Place Part Two was one of the best movie experiences that I've had. So I'm really looking forward to checking out A Quiet Place Part One at the theater in Dolby, because that's the place to see it in Dolby. All right, number six, I'm going with Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. This is nostalgia. I mean, I have to put Ghostbusters on my list. I grew up with the with these movies. I grew up loving Ghostbusters. And I really, really loved Ghostbusters Afterlife because, is his name Jason? I think it is. Jason Reitman, the son of Ivan Reitman. He knows these movies left, right, and sideways. He grew up with these films. He, he watched his dad direct these films he knows everything about them. And I thought the way that he really honored and did throwbacks to the first couple of movies in Ghostbusters Afterlife was absolutely perfect. So now we're going into Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And I love the way we're going back to New York City and embracing a completely different idea and concept with the ice, the snow, the frozen, all of that. So I'm just anxious. I'm anxious to see what we are going to do with this concept. So that's the reason why Ghostbusters is on my top 10, because there's a, a soft spot in my heart for Ghostbusters. There always will be. I always love them. 
And plus, I think the original, well, not the four, because obviously we lost, we lost Spengler years ago, but the three remaining, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on Ernie Hudson. There we go. The, the rest of the Ghostbusters, the, the, the original trio, I guess, are going to have significant roles in the movie. And I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Is Sigourney Weaver coming back at all? I don't know, but you know what? I will find out when I check it out in the theater. Okay, so now we are getting into the top five. And at number five, I put Ballerina. Ballerina is what, like the John Wick spinoff? Is it a prequel? I'm not really sure, but it's in the world of John Wick. And this movie, obviously an action film, is starring Ana de Armas. This was actually supposed to come out, I think, last year. But unfortunately, it got delayed and bumped to 2024. But that is fine. Take your time. Take all the time you need to make it perfection. Now, what sells me on this movie is Ana de Armas. Because Ana de Armas, I thought, was incredible in No Time to Die with her action scene. That's pretty much all she had in that movie was that one little action scene. And she was amazing. It was incredible. And they did not utilize her enough in that movie. So now to have her cast in the main role in Ballerina, whew, I am all about it. Especially if I think Keanu is in this movie as John Wick. And if that is true, Ana de Armas and Keanu Reeves kicking ass side by side, sign me up. I totally want to see that. I am there for it. I don't believe a trailer has dropped for this movie yet, but once it does, I want to see it. I want to see this trailer because I think it's going to be absolutely incredible and amazing. And I've really been into action movies lately. There were a couple on my top 10 movies from last year. So I'm looking forward. I'm anxious for Ballerina. All right. Spot number four. What do you guys think it is? What do you, what do you guys think is on the rest of my list? All right. Number four is Beetlejuice 2. Beetlejuice 2. Now there's a part of me when I heard this movie was actually happening. I was like, no, why are we doing that? Because the original Beetlejuice, again, like Ghostbusters, is a part of my history growing up. It's nostalgia. It's one of those movies you don't touch again. It's a one and done. It's fine. It's good. But then we got confirmation that Tim Burton is returning directing. Michael Keaton is returning as Beetlejuice. You have Winona Ryder. Even Catherine O'Hara is back in their roles. Then you add in Jenna Ortega to the mix. Now you have me rethinking everything. I'm just really hope this is one of those movies. It could go either way. Either I'm kind of nervous about this film, as you guys can tell, because I keep interrupting myself. But this is one of those movies that either they're going to knock it out of the park and it's going to be a great sequel. Like, why did we wait so long for this? Or why did we do this? So I'm still kind of nervous about it, but I'm just real. I'm pulling for it. I really, really am. I'm pulling for Beetlejuice 2. I do not want it to tank or flop at all whatsoever. It is coming out at a good time of the year. I believe it's coming out early September. So that way it can go all the way through spooky season. Great release time. Fantastic. Don't move it. Don't you dare move it. Don't move it to summer or something stupid like other studios have done. Keep it in September and we're all good. So I'm rooting for Beetlejuice 2 and I'm, I'm just, I'm really hoping it's good. I can't wait for a trailer. Okay. <laughs> can't wait for a trailer. All right. Top three. Spot number three is going to Saw 11. And this is because Saw X was my number one horror film from last year. And the reason why Saw 11 is in my top 10 most anticipated is because the way they turned around the Saw franchise with one movie, it's pretty much unheard of. Like just, it's, I don't think we ever thought it was going to happen. We all thought the Saw franchise was dead. The movies were just going to get worse and worse. And then Saw 10 came out and completely changed 
no pun intended, the game. <laughs> it changed the game. Now, hopefully they're going to continue this rivalry storyline between John Kramer and what's her name? Cecilia, the bad chick at the end of Saw 10, because if you guys saw the movie, you obviously know what happens at the end. They're probably most likely going to continue that storyline into Saw 11. I think there's going to be a Saw 12. This is like a brand new trilogy or something. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what they are going to do now. What, how is the story going to continue? Just, just don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Continue it. Keep, keep that like human aspect to John Kramer that you brought into Saw X or, you know, Saw 10, whatever. And we're good. We're good. Don't mess with the formula because Saw X was great. And that is my high hopes for Saw 11. And that's why it's in spot number three. All right, spot number two, the runner up is Nosferatu. You guys know my love for vampire movies. I was talking about it when I was mentioning Abigail in spot number 10. But Nosferatu is like the godfather of vampires. We all know Nosferatu, the original vampire movie way back in the day. Robert Eggers has control of this movie. I can't even talk right now. Robert Eggers is the director of this new, no pun intended, revamped version. I'm not doing this on purpose. This is not scripted. It's obvious. Like I don't script, I don't script these videos at all whatsoever. Robert Eggers is revamping this version of Nosferatu. And that is the reason why I'm just so excited and so anticipating this movie. Because every film that Robert Eggers has done, I've absolutely loved. The Witch, The Lighthouse, and also The Northman. I think his directing style is not for everyone. That is obvious, especially with The Lighthouse. It's a little freaky and it's a little weird, but I appreciate it. I appreciate his directive style and where he wants to go and for him to take on yeah the witch was a horror movie the lighthouse has horror aspects as well but i feel like nosferatu is like a full-on horror film like this is horror right here you're dealing with like the og of vampires here it's like nosferatu and and dracula right those are like the main two like the ogs of vamps i don't know my vampire history i don't know where i'm going with this i'm rambling but He's the reason why I'm so excited to take on a full-fledged horror film and also Bill Skarsgård playing Nosferatu, the vamp. I'm so looking forward to this. We all know Bill Skarsgård and his incredible acting ability, being able to transform himself and be creepy and weird, being Pennywise in the brand new It films, and for him to take on Nosferatu... Who would not be excited for this movie? I mean, seriously, if you love horror films, if you love vampires, this is the movie for you. And I love horror. I love vamps. I love Robert Eggers. So I am down. I am down for this movie. I don't believe it's coming out until December. So we're going to have to wait a little bit, but it's going to be worth the wait. So I'm just, I'm so anxious. I'm so anxious to see this movie and what, the, what they're going to do with it. I just hope it's really creepy and really weird and just really freaky and grabs people's attention. Oh, I cannot wait to see a trailer. I want to see a trailer for the movie. All right. But the number one film, I kind of gushed about Nosferatu, but I couldn't help it. All right. The number one film that I am most anticipating, and I'm sure this movie is on a lot of other people's lists, it is Joker 2. Joker 2, I am just dying to see this film. You guys know I loved the first Joker movie, Joaquin's performance, it obviously won him an Oscar for a reason. Some people disagree with me on that, and that is fine. But, I, but the main reason why I'm looking forward to Joker 2 besides Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. We'll get to that in a second. But I'm really looking forward to seeing Joaquin's performance as Joker. Because in the first film, he mainly was Arthur Fleck, his reg you know regular person. He wasn't transformed into Joker until the last like 20, 
30 minutes, maybe 30 minutes of the movie. It was, it was short. It wasn't a lot of time that we had him as Joker through and through. So now with the sequel, I want to see him just go nuts. I want to see him go crazy. I want to see his interpretation of Joker full on out there, just causing chaos and anarchy and just being crazy. And then coupling that with Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, forget it. Like I, I was so thrilled when I heard that Lady Gaga was going to be the brand new Harley Quinn. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Margot Robbie as Harley. She's the only Harley that we've had so far. And we know we've had multiple Batman, multiple Superman. It is time to have another Harley Quinn, a different perspective, you know, and I just think Lady Gaga, she's going to kill it. I know she's going to kill it. She's dedicated. She's hardworking. And I just know she's going to bring it to this role. Just have an open mind, people, because I, I know she's probably going to get some judgment because she's not Margot Robbie. She's not that Harley. But you know what? You got to be open minded to have different perspectives. So I'm just so anxious to see Joaquin's Joker performance coupled with Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. I want to see the beginning of their love and their romance. It's all psychotic and twisted. This is a story that we should have gotten years and years ago and now we're finally going to get it. And I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant about hearing about this movie because there was a musical element or there is music in this movie. There's something to do with music but I think they're going to kill it. I really, really do. Because you have Todd Phillips and I mean, when you have Lady Gaga being a part of it, you're not going to fail. Music is what she does. This is her thing. So I just feel like this is like a perfect partnership of creative talent across the board. And that is why Joker 2 is my most anticipated movie. I, I just really want to see where they're going to go with this. And that's all I got to say about it. That's all I got to say. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'm just so, I'm just so excited for all of these movies, as you guys can see, because I just love movies in general. And that's why I have a YouTube channel. All right. I'm just rambling at this point. So that is my list of my top 10 most anticipated movies for 2024. So like I said earlier, if you have a difference of opinion, then comment down below and let me know your personal top 10 anticipated movies. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.